Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. Uh, on the bench today, uh, we have a Fluence turntable. Um, the video is not necessarily going to be about a repair because I've already fixed this one. And uh, the only reason it came in is because uh, somebody bumped this guy's tone arm during a party or something. And uh, they completely moved the counterweight. It was tracking at almost five grams. So when he went to listen to one of his records, um, he was getting this howling sound coming out through his speakers. It was probably because the stylus was pushing down so hard on the record, it may have been scraping the bottom of the cartridge on the album itself. So I've already rectified that. I've rebalanced the arm, uh, set the correct tracking force and anti-skating, and the uh, the sound has, uh, the wow and uh, howling has uh, gone away. So it has nothing to do with that. Um, so what I thought is, uh, this is a brand that is starting to uh, uh, get a foothold in the turntable market. Um, I have uh, quite a few guys in uh, in our uh, club here um, that use these and uh, they really enjoy them. So, and uh, honestly, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to look at one of these up close. So I thought it might be a good opportunity to uh, examine this turntable and give you my thoughts uh, on what I uh, think of it as far as build quality and all the rest of it. So this model is the uh, Fluence uh, Look at the box. I don't know if there's a model number on it or not. No model number. Here we are. It's an RT83T. Okay, and uh, it says designed and engineered in Canada and manufactured in Taiwan. All right, manufacturing Taiwan is, is actually a good thing. I think the Taiwanese are uh, just as capable as the Japanese these days in producing high quality equipment. Uh, most of the world's uh, microchips actually come from Taiwan. So um, I would say that's a good thing. And just uh, from the look of it, what I've been able to see so far it uh, feels well built. Um, just lifting the cover, the hinges are super smooth, very strong, and it has a nice solid thunk when it closes. I mean, that's just feel. As far as the design of the table, it's a belt drive and it has an external motor. It's mounted uh, up top here. The belt surrounds the entire platter, so there's no inner platter. Here's our belt on it. It's a big, long belt because it has to go all the way around. Okay, we got a nice motor here. Seems stable. Um, this is not the original platter. He uh, did not bring it when he brought it for service. The platter itself, it does have an inner platter, which is interesting. So I'm just wondering if Fluence has models where the motor is mounted a little bit more internally uh, that go around this portion of the inner platter. That could very well be. Um, the platter itself is nothing special. It looks like just a piece of aluminum. It's a little ringy. So if you don't have a good platter mat, and I'm not sure what the platter mat is like that comes with this thing. I just put a felt mat on it for now. Um, you could have some ringing issues. So not the highest quality platter. The bearing itself is smooth and quiet. I don't hear any noise. It turns nicely. Um, obviously you can lubricate it with a little bit of oil, but uh, obviously this new table is fairly brand new, so I'm not uh, doing any service on it whatsoever. Put the platter back on. So when you install the belt in this, you would wrap it around the external part of the platter itself, which is always kind of tricky, you know, because it's so big. And I'll be honest, I don't really like the look of that when the belt's hanging outside. Not my thing. I don't need to see the belt. I prefer it when it's inside the planter, platter and out of sight. But that's the design on this one. Uh, this one came from the factory uh, with what looks like a standard techniques looking head shell. And it comes with an Ortifon 2M red cartridge. So it comes with a fairly decent cartridge right out of the box. So um, the red is good sounding. Um, it's a good value for the money. Uh, it comes with some very nice quality cables. It comes with an external ground and a power pack 
wall wart power supply. All right, let me, uh, I'm gonna pause and bring you down. We'll get a closer look at the tone arm. Okay, there's a look at the front end. It's got a kind of a piano uh, gloss black finish to it. Very shiny. So it's gonna attract a lot of fingerprints. Um, here's your uh, main control. You have 45 and you have 33 and it actually operates uh, some like a Riga or something. So once you put it on 33, the platter starts spinning. This one actually has a micro switch within. So when you move the arm over, it moves the platter. And when you bring it back, it shuts it off, which is nice. So your platter's not always spinning. And you can leave it in the off position if you have to do any work on the arm or set your balance, you know, and, and set your tracking force. Or if you want to put a uh, an external uh, uh, measurement tool, like a digital scale or whatever, on the platter, you don't have to worry about it spinning when you move the arm over. So that's, that's a nice feature. The arm itself is uh, nicely constructed. It's an S arm. It's aluminum. Uh, bearings feel solid. I don't feel a lot of slop in them. Maybe just a little bit front to back. You can hear that. Side to side, the bearings are solid. Um, I'm going to say the, the Arctone arm is nothing special. Uh, it's got a uh, arm lifter here. Yeah, standard anti-skating, standard counterweight. So um, nice, but not remarkable in any way. There's the shiny plinth. This one's uh, a little dusty. The Ortofon 2M Red. And like I mentioned, this is not the platter mat that comes with it. This is just something I threw on there for testing purposes. Um, let me pause and we'll get a look around back. Okay, around the back you have uh, non-attached cables. So if you want to uh, mess around with cables or you think that, uh, you know, $2,000 cables are going to sound better than $100 cables. Uh, all the more power to you. Uh, so you got a couple RCA jacks back there. You have a nice ground post. So if you want to attach some kind of uh, silver ground cable, then you may do that. Uh, there's a switch back here which says auto stop. So I'm thinking that it's probably a feature where when you reach the end of the record, it'll turn the motor off. That's what I'm thinking on or off. Uh, I thought that this was originally an internal preamp, but uh, it looks like it does not have that. And uh, here is your uh, your power right there. So it's uh, 12 volts and 0.5 amps. So if you do blow up your power supply or if you lose it or something, it shouldn't be too hard to find an external wall wart for this table. Here's another look at the motor. And uh, we'll pause and uh, we'll see how it operates. Okay, we're back up top. We've got a record on the turntable. Um, we're just going to see how it operates. Pretty standard, um, basically manual turntable. Um, queuing up. Once you move the arm over, a micro switch will start the motor. And the queuing is nice and slow. <laughs> Sound quality is very nice. Um, I'm sure that it'll sound even better if you uh, upgrade the uh, the stylus on the 2M series cartridge here. Um, I don't hear any wow or flutter, so the motor's good and strong. Uh, I just want to see if this actually does shut off. When we reach the end of the record. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly what that auto stop means. I'll, I don't have the manual with me either to check it out. So it's definitely not auto return. Oh, there it goes. Maybe it just needs an adjustment. It actually, it shut off. Hmm. It looks like it stops the motor once it reaches a certain point, but it didn't do it for me there. Oh, well, um, yeah, so that's 
basically it. Um, I am going to give this one a pass. Um, I kind of like it uh, for a basic turntable. It does have nice suspended feet. There's no suspension on the uh, on the platter, but uh, the feet are nicely suspended, so it should uh, absorb bumps and, and uh, air, uh, airborne vibrations fairly well. Um, cartridge is nice, good quality. The arm is, is serviceable, decent, and um, let's actually, before we, we stop this, let's, let's see how, uh, let's see how stable this motor is, how close to 33 it is. Maybe we'll run the, the digital one as well on my phone. Let's see here. Okay, it, it, it's running, it started fast, so it's got high torque at the beginning. And it looks like it's holding 33 pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna start up my phone and, and we'll, do a, we'll do a digital analysis on speed. Okay, let's see how, uh, how she spins. You notice how it starts up high at around 37 and now it bumps down. So it's running at 33.5 to 33.6. So it's just a smidge fast. All right, so let's start our analysis here and see how we do in well and flutter. And it's gonna measure. Speed's pretty stable, I have to say. Let's see what the phone app says. Okay. All right. So, what do we got here? We have uh, it is plus point six four percent fast. Um, our minimum maximum is thirty three point five one to thirty three point five nine. So we're minus point one one to plus point one one. So take those measurements for what they are. To my ear, it sounds pretty stable and pretty good. It's a little fast, which is kind of typical is what I've been finding with a lot of modern belt drive turntables, even Regas, they just tend to run that smidge fast. And uh, that's to give uh, our golden eared British reviewers um, that uh, what they call tempo and pace. And if you understand that joke, you'll know what I mean. Anyway, guys, that is the Fluence turntable that, uh, is available for sale on their website. Um, not a sponsored video, by the way. Uh, and uh, I, like I said, I give it a pass. It's a pretty nice table. Um, I'm not sure what these retail for. I, you know, I should probably check that. Hang on one sec. Yeah, they re they retail for four seventy two ninety nine Canadian. Um, you can work that out, but it's probably high three hundreds US is what I'm thinking. Maybe three ninety nine, depending on the exchange rate. So not. Not outrageous, um, cheaper than a Rega, and I will say that this is a better built turntable than a Rega RP, whatever they are now, one, two, um, not three, but uh, I, I, I would pick this over, uh, uh, whatever, sorry, the planner one and two. At least you can adjust anti-skating on it. Um, yeah, so that's that's my two cents. Anyway, there you go. There's the Fluence. Um, just a quick channel update right now. Um, I have been on vacation, so that's why there haven't been any visit videos posted. Uh, I'm back now, and I'm going to have a bit of a backlog of turntables, so I'm hoping to get uh, a few more videos uploaded uh, to YouTube for your viewing pleasure. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.